Uh, uh, it's okay now. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is uh, talking about the accelerator framework, UADK usage and uh, its de uh, development. Uh, we, Gordon and uh, I, we are in our high city learning team. We are uh, make this speech together. Uh, this is agenda. First is uh, what's about UADK and then the UADK usage in many areas. Nowadays, we know there are, there are more and more accelerators like DPU, NPU, TRIPU, and uh, also, uh, uh, also many user space driver like DBDK, SBDK. Also, there are some performance requirements like zero copy. And uh, we all know kernel is trusted, but uh, if, uh, uh, if the driver is in user space, can we trust it again? So, so this is the UADK is our, our, our solution. We Ninaro ha, and uh, High Silicon have collapsed uh, for several years. And uh, it, uses, it exposes the accelerator capability to user space, so it bypasses the kernel. Uh, it uh, uses our MMU SVA feature. Uh, so based on our MMU, we can provide the boundary check and the permission check. So we can trust the uh, user driver now. Also, also use the RMMU SVA feature. It can share the virtual address between, between SMMU and RMMU. So in the user space, we can directly use the virtual address for the DMA. And uh, uh, also, thanks for the path ID. That, that is the SVA feature. And uh, the driver can run by the multi-application together. It can be dis distinguished by the path ID. Usually, uh, if, if not using SVA, we, can, we have to use the physical address. It cannot be used by multi address, a multi for, uh, application. Uh, this is the general framework. Uh, the bottom is the uh, accelerator. For example, it has many queues. Uh, have many queue. Uh, uh, each queue can be used can, can be used by the application. So they can uh, the multi queue can be used uh, at the same times for the uh, pass ID. It, uh, Path ID 1 here is application 1. Path ID 2 is application 2. They can run together, can be distinguished by the path ID. Uh, so uh, they, can be, uh, they can use open, open the chart device through the USDE, and USDE can get a queue. Uh, USDE can uh, do the SV bind feature. It will bind the device to the count MM. And after that, the the, we can use the virtual address directly. Not, uh, uh, the USD drive is already merged in the kernel 5.7, not the general framework. Uh, this is the total UADK. Uh, uh, USD is a kernel part, is a kernel module, and the total, total framework is called a UADK, uh, called a user space accelerator development kit. Uh, there are two requirements. One is uh, our MMU have to support the SVA. The other is accelerator have to support the SVA because the, uh, the device have to recognize the path ID. So currently in our, in our platform, we provide the crypto and the compression to a kit. The compression like uh, the G, GZIP, the lib, deflate, and uh, the STD, and, and also the asymmetric uh, crypto. Like I say DH, ECC. Uh, this is very difficult for the CPU. It's very time consuming. And it's much suitable for the accelerator to do it. Also, the, uh, the same crypto, like AES SM4, and the digest SHY1, SH2. And uh, um, it contains the kernel space. The kernel space, uh, we have to use the USD. And also, uh, if uh, there's a vendor driver, the driver can provide some callback to register the USD. And besides that, the user space, user space like uh, the uh, user space driver. Also, we provide some uh, libwd cool tool for e user usage. Our next goal is uh, enrich the UADK. We are adding more and more accelerator. And also, uh, now, nowadays, uh, uh, the MV8, the CE, and SV is very popular. So we are also trying to add the, add the CPU instruction to this, this framework. And uh, also, we are enlarging the UADK ecosystem. This is our next goal. 
And this UHK, our UHK is already supported the uh, open SSL, SSLL. It is supported the both open 1.1 and open 3.0 provider. We have to do some uh, basic, uh, basic uh, uh, performance tests. We can, uh, the hardware environment is uh, Quimpon 920. Uh, for, for them, the, the left side, uh, the I say, I the sign is much better. The green line, the green line is the software. The yellow line is the hardware accelerator at about uh, four times better. And for the, for the verify, it uh, is a little better. And then SM3 and SM4, we can, try, we can find the uh, software is better in the small packet because it, it's very convenient if you have a data and then just uh, call the CPU. But for the big packet, uh, UDK is much better. This is OpenSL. OpenSL now we support uh, 1.1 and 3.0. Uh, 3.0, uh, we are replacing the 1.1 in the many, many, many operating system, like Ubuntu, next. And uh, this is the DBDK. DBDK we already, uh, DBDK we have uh, uh, upstreamed our crypto, crypto PMD in the DBDK. The performance also the same. The uh, small packet, the CPU, CPU is better. But for the big packet, UADK is better. <coughs> uh, this is a compress. The last is a crypto. This is a compress. We also, we also uh, the, the, the crypto is already merged. And uh, the compress, we are targeting the 24 this year, 24.7, just uh, July, this July release. It's already submitted and uh, will, be, will be reviewed now. Uh, fine, uh, uh, we compared with Zlib, and uh, the, the compression is much better. Compression like uh, uh, almost 20, 20 times better. But for the decompression, it's changed. The Zlib is better. Zlib is better than we will do, do more some investigation. This is SBDK. SBK usually for the storage. And uh, SBK has a, has a module. It can directly use a DBDK crypto. So uh, if you already upstreamed our driver to the DBDK, it, it is very easy for the SBK to reuse it. And uh, we, we, we are trying to, to upstream the crypto and uh, compress the crypto. Since the crypto is already merged in the DBDK, so we just uh, send some patch to enable it. Uh, it already merged. And uh, for the compress, it has some dependency. We have first upstream the compress to the DBDK, and then, and then uh, the, uh, enable the SBDK. Have do some, uh, there, is a, there is a benchmark tool in the SBDK. It's already, but it only support a, a compress. We can see for the UDK compress is much better, about uh, well, uh, 10 times better, 10 times better for the compress. Uh, this is used in the QMU. QMU, QMU line migration. QMU line migration means uh, uh, migrate the total VM state to another, to the, from the source to the, to the dark destination host. Uh, there is a, there is a technique called a multi-FD. It can, it can do the multi, multi uh, using multi-FD method to parallel transfer the process to speed up. And the Intel has, has upstreamed a patch to using their, their accelerator, Intel QPL. And we, we, also, we also have you tried our UADK solution. Xiaomi has sent a FC and do some, uh, uh, the, the function is, is work now. And uh, the investigation, uh, the performance, because it depends on the, depends on the network, network. So still investigation, on the investigation. About the same host, it's, it's easy to test. But for the different host, it depends on it, it, it different if using the network or, or using other other network. So it's still on the investigation. We will be sent out published when the patch is released uh, formally. Uh, next, go on, uh, do some uh, using UDK in the big data. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Zhangfei. So, uh, to extend the usage of the hardware accelerator, we also did some job, you know, in the for big data area. 
uh, that's the we are showing the software stack. So to bring the capability to uh, big data, so we need to extend the uh, JDK Java the Java layer. So actually, there is a uh, we based on the Java crypto architecture. We write a new uh, provider. It's also called a provider <laughs> in JDK. So the same name as OpenSSL. Anyway, there is a KE provider based on Java uh, crypto architecture. So uh, recently, uh, I upgraded uh, upgrade upgrade this uh, KE provider from the OpenSSL 1.1.1 to OpenSSL 3.0. So based on that, uh, inside of the OpenSSL 3.0. So we implemented a load balancing feature. So with that, uh, that means so the same algorithm can be uh, assigned to either the software acceleration with the which has the vector instructions, or uh, assigned to hardware accelerate accelerators, which is the UADK UADK provider. So uh, it in the usage, it's pretty easy. So you just need to change the configuration file of the GDK. Uh, here we submitted the code to Bisheng GDK, which is a flavor uh, uh, from uh, optimized by the High Silicon uh, team. It's, it's now part of the Open EULA. And uh, you just need to add one line from uh, into the Java security configuration file. So seeing it's uh, it has a KE provider has priority over the others, you know, the some providers and the other provider. So uh, at this moment, we run a benchmark test for SM4. Uh, so we use a common tool, Terra Sort, which is uh, to measure the uh, IO HDFS uh, performance with the hardware accelerator. So we, when you need to encrypt uh, everything in SM4, so in that use case, we get 30% uh, plus performance gains. So you get, uh, the performance gains are even bigger than you know, the total uh, data, size, data set size uh, is, uh, grows uh, larger. So we, we see, as, as shown in this, uh, this graph, so with 100 gigabyte data sets, we can see 49% uh, uh, performance gains. Yeah, that's it. So uh, following up uh, in the future, maybe we also extend this capability into other big data components like uh, Kafka. So we are working on that. Maybe bring up bring some more updates in next session in next event. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So any questions? <laughs> oh. Oh. So uh there there we we, we, we already have uh, your specific uh, uh, accelerate, right? But we see that uh, yeah. in some case you can use CPU, right? Right. Uh, maybe better. And the CPU has a new instruction coming out or something, which probably even better. And there's maybe, if this is open source, so there's a third party uh, uh, accelerate. So yeah. how easily to port us uh, a newer New York accelerate uh, into th this architect, and uh, then can you support multiple accelerate at the same time, and uh, how you can uh, yeah. like switch? Can you dynamically switch you know, based yeah. on the package size? Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the question. So actually, there are uh, two ways to do this. So uh, we implemented two options. One option is uh, de is defined the new UADK layer. So we we support multiple accelerators in U well in UADK. 
So Zhang Fei can provide more details. Another way to do that is to implement this in the OpenSSL layer. So we OpenSSL 3.0 provides some uh, framework so we can implement this dynamic switching uh, capability between the different accelerators, uh, maybe hardware vendor one, hardware vendor two, software vendor one, software vendor two. So the uh, problem is just that the, we are still in the process of upstreaming this patch set. So it's under the community review. And we, with this uh, mechanism, uh, the user can define their policy, either as the uh, similar to the idea will be similar to DPDK, either uh, bandwidth based or the CPU read based. So if you prefer to use more CPU, so then you can you know, assign the job to CPUs. If you want to just, you have other jobs, you can, you want to lower the CPU rate, or then you can assign the jobs to UADK, yeah. So uh, Zhang Fei can uh, share with more details on the UADK design, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a very good question. Yeah. Now we uh, already add uh, the C and SV instruction to the UADK, and uh, we also consider the, this question. Uh, the simplest method is just to change, change the SO. For example, if using the uh, SVE, we just uh, uh, import the SVE to the system. And if using the, using the hardware accelerator, just uh, using the, uh, add the, uh, like for example, the driver.so to the system. It's the simplest way. And for the dynamic, for the dynamic we, we also tried, uh, tried to add the, a scenario, which uh, we also, on the investigation, on the investigation, we also trying the, for, for example, uh, a log scenario and then add some parameter. And uh, uh, each, each scenario, uh, each scenario only, uh, can only bind to the, for example, the SV is one scenario, the, uh, the hardware accelerator is one scenario, and uh, it will uh, update, uh, it will choose by the application. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just, uh, one more question is, uh, uh, looks like the uh, acceleration is application dependent. Uh, you you choose the application and then you input uh, uh, your uh, UADK. Uh, have you implement uh, UADK for some like a common library? You know, like a mass library, this type of things. For my mass library, so maybe. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't understand mass, but. If you can accelerate this in a common library, then it can be used in many situations like in the background. Yeah, yeah. We, we try to... Yes, uh, that's our yeah. target. Oh. Yeah. Add to the... <laughs> <laughs> we we uh, try to extend the usage of UADK in several uh, open source projects, OpenSSL, DPDK, and the storage SPDK. Yeah. Yeah, one question. Um, yeah. Can we use... UADK in the virtual machine and container environment? Uh, yes, uh, uh, it's already supported in the next stage. It's already supported. The performance is uh, about uh, if using the big, uh, big, pay packet, big page, two, two megabyte big page, the performance is almost 90%. Uh, it's already supported, but the patch is uh, still in upstream. Uh, but there's some some big uh, big change of the, our SMMU. So the function is worked, and the patch is still in upstream. <laughs> Many patches. Okay, thank you. There is a way, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay, any more questions? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.